Hello friends and family. So I'm just going to walk around and I thought I'd take the camera with me and uh, point out a few things. Everything as you can see is really filling out now. We really haven't had much rain, but uh, everything is still growing like crazy. Harvesting these sugar snaps every day and these Lincoln peas. I just harvested a bunch this morning, but I'm waiting for these to balloon out. These are pretty good too. But in this bed, I have three tomato plants. You see one is really long. Up here, but it has some fruit on it. Uh, a lot of these tomato plants, I lost the tags on or got mixed up because I thought for sure that was a Tiny Tim, and obviously it's not Tiny Tim. It's probably the same of these. I'll identify them eventually, once they get bigger and ripen. This is the bed where I had the radishes. And here, I let them flower and go to seed because I want to collect the seeds. So it's going to take a while for these to dry out. But uh, boy, am I going to have radish seeds. Also on this trellis, I have the purple string beans. Oh, look at this friend here. I have to uh, get him off there. Crush him or something. I should bring a jar of soapy water around with me. And I have some onions in here. Um, I don't think they're going to really do much because they're not getting much sun at all. But maybe they'll keep some of the bugs away. So that'll be for this trellis. And on this side, I have more beans. I think these are the green beans. And I do have a Kajari melon there. And I think this is a sunflower. So a lot going on in this little 12 foot stretch here because I thought I planted Kajari melons and nothing came up. So I planted beans and then I found Kajari melon seeds and ended up poking them around in places because I really wanted the Kajari melons this year. So it's just gonna be a couple of things climbing up this trellis here. And tomato plants, three tomato plants in here, and some lovely basil. Of course, the lovely nasturtiums. Nasturtiums, basil, and the blue flowering rosemary. Shasta daisy plant was in here, and I moved it. I still have, I think these are the purple cone flowers. I'm going to have to move these too. I have some volunteer tomato plants, these two. And this, these little bushy things, look at this short little bushy one fell over actually. I think those might be, sorry there's a mosquito on me. The tiny Tims, I don't know, but these are really dense, um, strong, bushy plants. aroma of some kind. This is a cucumber, but that is a melon because it had that big flower on it. So it got eaten off. Cucumber, volunteer tomato, some more beautiful basil, and another one of those beetles. And some Romas, Juliet's maybe, I'll have to look at tags. But look at this Shasta Daisy, it is, uh, I'm 5'2", and it's up to the bridge of my nose, this tall flower. So this bush is huge. You 
sturdy. And that's why I put that one there. If it's gonna get that big, it's an okay area to cover. Now I did start Shasta daisies from seed and I have them in a pot in the area where I call Garden Central, where I do my potting, but I'm going to give it away. I'm gonna call some friends, see if they want that because it does get pretty big and bushy. Speaking of big and bushy, this tomato plant is really big. Oh, look at those, aren't they gorgeous? Mmm, the tomato smell. <laughs> As you saw, I harvested the garlic here now. I normally wait till like the 4th of July or early July. But this garlic bed I planted in early October. I think it was early. And uh, I was worried that they were going to rot in the ground because I planted them early. But they grew and the leaves were dying off and they were ready. So they were ready early too. I do have another garlic bed that I planted the end of December, kind of late. So those probably won't be pulled until like the second week of July. I'll show you those. But these pepper plants are all doing beautifully, really greened up and flowering. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to tie them up or cage them because they're gonna get pretty heavy and I don't want them to flop over and break. These two tomato plants one of them is determinate, but I forget which one it is. Though I was pruning them both, I stopped pruning them because this one is not flowering and it might be the one that's the determinate kind. And I might have gypped myself with some tomatoes on that one, but we'll see. This is ready to harvest. This is the Russian kale that I had over the winter and into the spring. I let go to flower and seed, and now it's time to get some seeds out of here. But as you can see, some of them already opened up and fell on the ground. This is thistle growing, blue globe thistle. This is the orange cosmos, I believe. And I've been taking some out of here and planting them around in the other gardens. And it's still packed. <laughs> but I think that's, they're going to be amazing here. Like, look at this one in the tomato bed. I could really transplant that somewhere. And let this tomato plant get some more air. So, these, I have three here. Can you guys see? Am I zoomed in? It's close. I have three tomato plants here. One, two, three. I've really been pruning this back. I don't want it to get crazy. I was trying to do the single stem, but man, these suckers grow fast <laughs> once they start. But at least they're off the walkway. But I'm still keeping my eye on, open, on them and, and uh, taking off the suckers when I can. And these are mortgage lifters. And then in the ground behind this bed are three more mortgage lifters. These are boxcar willies. Now look at these stems are strange. See, you can see how wide they are. Some of them are like doubled. Let's see if I can find one. No, but I see a sucker. I'll show you the stem. Here we go. Look at this. These stems are like doubled. Boxcar willies. I don't know if that's normal. But I'm trying to keep them trimmed. And actually, I'm trying to keep them off the ground. And it looks like I have to do some more down there. I see some touching the ground over here and turning yellow. So I have to get to that too. And I have one growing here. It's the mortgage lifter. Okay. Mortgage lifter, mortgage lifter, mortgage lifter. In the ground behind the other bed. Now these are 
are um, two-year-old onions. These are about one inch, one and a half inch diameter, up to three inch here. They're hollow with these gorgeous pom-poms on top and the bees love them. But so I'm gonna have to make sure I cut these off before the seeds drop. I don't want onions growing up, growing everywhere. But uh, I just love the way they are looking here and the bees are loving them too. Then I have cucumbers growing up on this side of the trellis, which I'm training for this side of the trellis to give the tomatoes on the other side some room. And in the ground here, I have this nice surprise. Last year, I grew the Chinese amaranth, Chinese spinach, so the amaranth. And I didn't do it this year. I don't know why, because I really enjoyed it and uh, came in handy, because I don't have luck with spinach. So I like to use these in the salads and smoothies. Here's a volunteer. So he's happy there. That's where he's going to stay. Right next to the cayenne peppers. And look pepper. Cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper. And this lovely bush is amaranth. It's actually two. And uh, the leaves are edible. When they're young, they're better. I actually sowed these seeds and grew this for the prettiness of this here. I just love the color. And I just love the braid look. These are just gorgeous. Check this one out. Little flowers on the end. Pretty long. These are just gorgeous. I just think they're amazing. Trestles. Look at this one. Did I mention this is called Love Lies Bleeding? This is the uh, the garlic bed, the December garlic bed. So I just took the scapes off them. I should be able to harvest these in July, the end of the first week, maybe second week. <laughs> these are uh, beef sticks, plain and simple beef sticks. These two, I feel like I'm so close you can't really see this. These two are um, Abe Lincolns and I'm pruning them too because last year they got over eight feet tall and took over the whole walkway. I'm trying to keep the walkways as clear as possible for as long as possible because eventually they're going to win. And I have a volunteer tomato here I decide to keep I just have to walk around these daisies and I have the jalapenos here with the cucumber growing on it. Got to really keep at these. See this little baby cucumber. Okay, just weave it. And at the bottom of these peppers, I see some volunteer tomatoes. Obviously, where it was in my compost. I've got to pull them, but I hate to do it. I could transplant them. I was thinking, what am I going to put in this garlic bed now that that's cleared? I was thinking I could transplant all the volunteer tomatoes there. But do I really need all those tomatoes? Um, keeping my eye on the squash in the back and if they're not doing good I could actually I still have time if I want to plant a squash or two here maybe the bush variety you know zucchinis or the patty pans yeah, my goal is to keep these aisleways usable
The jungle is starting. And these beauties are not helping. <laughs> We're supposed to get more thunderstorms in the morning, so I'm doing this in the afternoon, and you can tell there's a lot of traffic and work going on in the neighborhoods. I did want to show you, again, this pepper plant here. This is called Phileas Blue, and they're purple, and the flowers are beautiful purple. But be careful handling them, because they're very hot. I heard that these peppers are used in pepper spray. But I also heard that once they turn red, they're not as hot. When they turn red, they're only twice as hot as a jalapeno. <laughs> when they're purple, 20 times hotter than a jalapeno, where you have to be careful and not burn yourself. So I'm a little worried about these babies, so I am not gonna try one until they're red and then uh, let the red ones dry up. And then you can like sprinkle them, crunch them up in your soup or stew or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna do with these peppers. But here's a view from this side. Okay. I have dahlias coming up here and cosmos, and I really just want this covered in cosmos. Uh, that's an annual that's in front of my hydrangea, which is probably not going to amount to much this year, so that's why I put that there. No blooms, and it's just a tiny bush anyway. So I have some zinnias around here. Um, look at these. These are purple-eyed daisies, the African purple-eyed daisies. They're low. This one's kind of bushy, but they're gorgeous, and I do have them in some arrangements, too. I should show you guys some of my posy arrangements that I've been making with these flowers. This flower situation is the most I've ever, ever had. 2020 was a big flower garden explosion for me, and I'm really enjoying them. This hydrangea came back beautifully. I mean, just look at those colors, <laughs> amazing. Oh, and this pot, this is the Cleome. I still don't know what this is. And the flowers close at night and they open up big during the day. Well, not big, but you know, they open up. But this is like very wispy with beautiful purple little flowers on the tips. Anybody know what that is? I haven't a clue. Oh, butterfly weed. <laughs> the herb garden. I've got to get to that. There's always something to do. But this is the bee garden. This has 54 plants in it, not 54 varieties, but um, we'll see what survives. Most of them are perennials. Well, it's an annual, a couple of annuals to fill in for some color. But I'm going to see what perennials really do well in here, and I'm going to get more of them. Like that Estelby, for example. It's just gorgeous. 
and it's just one in that color. You can see there's another darker pinkish or reddish burgundy behind it. But this pink one really stands out. And I'm gonna put another one right there. It's really doing well there. This hoster is huge. And the tree leaves. I have one tree that just drops leaves all year round. But look under here, this poor thing. It actually bloomed <laughs> earlier. But these, this hosta has really covered it up. I'm gonna move that. You know, this burgundy one here looks good here. And look at the, look at the flowers on this one. This is gorgeous. And I heard hummingbirds like those, even though they are tiny, tiny. Those hookras. But one burgundy there. I could use another burgundy somewhere. So I'll move that one. I'll figure it out. This is um, Pink Calendula Surprise. So Pink Calendula Surprise is not pink. It's supposed to have pink tinges to the bottom leaves. Um, I haven't seen that yet. But either way, they're just gorgeous and reliable. Okay. And we have Squash Island. Of course, everything's planted too close together, but no powdery mildew yet. I haven't seen any bugs eating anything. It's just that the bees did not get in here to pollinate anything until later, like last week, the end of June. So a lot of flower, flowers died off. I did have a lot of um, blossom end rot on some of the zucchinis. But now the bees are back here a lot and I see that we have um, some good zucchinis growing. So let me show you some good ones. Let's see, there's one there. I'm pretty sure that one's gonna be okay. Sorry, that one's gonna be okay. There's one down there. There's a bigger one right there. It's like a little maraca. Oh, yeah, this one's gonna be okay. One of them died, had blossom end rot. Oh, gotta get in here. And there's a big one laying on the ground here somewhere. This one is definitely gonna make it. And I have some patty pans here. See that there? Little baby patty pan, hope he makes it. Oh, the best of all, I don't know if you remember, I couldn't identify what this was because it was different than the others. This is the butternut squash. I'm pretty sure of it. Flowers just started. Look how gorgeous that flower is. It's like a yellow and green tulip. And there's going to be a flower there, and there, and there. I just leaned this trellis up against the fence. I did have this broken uh, wooden thing in case I need it. And I've been harvesting some dragon tongue beans here. You really got to look closely for them. Oh, this is a regular string bean. See, it's a mix in here. Here's a dragon tongue. Small. They're weird, not weird, but different feeling to them. But you use them the same as you would a string bean. And more over here.
St. John's wort bloomed this year. Did not bloom last year. I tried to tie it up and tame it, but it doesn't want to be tame. I have some flocks here and here that's going to be coming up soon. I have these day lilies. I thought these were going to be yellow, but they're a little peachy and pinky. I like that. And I planted lots of lavender here. And I have one here. I'll probably plant more, but I wanted to get like a nice row of lavender. I had 20 Brahms of caladiums sent to me. And I just ran around and stuck them in certain areas. And you see, they're finally coming up here. I thought they were goners, but just when I was deciding what to plant here, they showed up. So I have those two. And I have one in here. I'm pretty sure I planted two in here, but I don't see. Oh yeah, here they are. See, there is more coming up. So these are going to be pretty. I think I'm going to pull out this little wisteria plant. They seem to get crazy, even though this is not really getting crazy. It's just a little baby. But I think what I want is climbing roses. So i got a chance to rethink that. I'm going to see if somebody wants that one. So I always start out thinking I'm just going to do a tomato update and then I just can't help myself. I walk around showing you as much as I can and I talk real fast and oh my gosh, check out the blueberries. <laughs> I can't seem to stay outside of these gardens. All I do is roam around. What can I fix? What can I, what needs pulling up? What needs sewing? And I just want to remember this view because it's going to get crazier. Well, thank you for spending time with me. Greatly appreciate it. <laughs> I hope everybody has a great week and a great 4th of July and 4th of July weekend.